All right, this chapter is all about diffusion or how mass is able to move through solid matter, right? In response to a composition gradient. Now, why do we care about this? Well, we've already been talking a little bit about it. Remember back to our chapter when we talked about fatigue property of materials? We said that one way to improve fatigue properties is to do carburization, right? When you carburize something, you change the surface relative to what's inside of it, right? And what this can do is it places the surface in compression Therefore, before a crack can grow and split the material, it has to overcome that compressive force that the surface is already under. So that's pretty slick. How do they do it? They do it by introducing carbon, right? So you start with a carbon atmosphere, like this might be your material. You've got a source of carbon out here in the air, probably carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, right? And then you cause it to react with your sample. So you build up a layer of a carbon-rich layer along the surface of your material, and stuffing those extra carbon atoms into there compresses the lattice, right? Now the question is, you could do this and you could achieve different uh, widths, right? Maybe your width is going to be that thick, right? Or maybe it's going to be even thicker. And how do you control that? Well, you can see that here. Take a look in this drawing, right? You've got a really thin layer and it gets progressively thicker as you go around there. and so. The way that we can predict this thickness of that layer and what the concentration profile of carbon atoms will look like is by understanding diffusion. So it's important to understand because it's going to change the properties. Like maybe you need that thickness to be a millimeter. Maybe it needs to be a centimeter, right? We can control that once we know how to calculate diffusion for materials, right? All right. It'll, we can also figure out how hot does your heat treatment need to be, right? Is 800 Celsius enough? Do you need to go up to 900? Is, could you go all the way down to 600? Like these things we can calculate, right? Um, and then the, uh, the concentration profile. Another thing we talked about was the lamellar structure. We said the lamellar structure looks like this sort of zebra structure that you see here. And the reason it does is because it all turns into a solid quickly. And yet, if you look at it, as you cool down right through that eutectic point, you then split to pure gold and pure silicon. Neither of these tolerates really any solid solubility. So all of your gold has to go this way, all your silicon has to go that way, it has to split. And this is happening as solid, so it's probably not going to be able to happen, uh, it's, not, it's going to happen quite quickly, so it's not going to be able to travel very far. Right? So again, if this was your solidification front, you end up with these regions of silicon and gold and silicon and gold because you literally have to move atoms some distance out of the way. Like your gold atoms have to move out of the way, your silicon atoms have to move into those bands, right? So what we're really figuring out is we're calculating what is this distance that things can travel, right? If that, that, that will be your diffusion distance at this temperature and that's going to give you a good idea of how thick these lamellar bands are going to be. Um, we could go on. In engineering applications, diffusion is really, really important. And sometimes uh, we run into it when we didn't plan for it. When you join two pieces of metal together and then you weld them, for example, you are causing diffusion a little bit, right? You can see that if you take copper and nickel, right? You take a block of copper and you take a block of nickel and then you put those together and as you weld them, or maybe they're just pressed together in a hot environment, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is that the concentration profile of these different materials is going to get mixed. You're going to end up with something that looks like this, right? If this is one phase, your other phase is going to look like the other, right? And you can see that, that literally it started out a, a nice sharp profile where all of your copper was over here, all of your nickel was there, but these things diffuse into one another. Um, now that's for an example of a material where copper and nickel, we know that they have the same crystal structure. They have complete solid solubility all the way across. What about a material that doesn't have complete solid solubility? Maybe one that forms intermediate compounds. Well, we can see an example of that right here. This was a type of steel, a type of stainless steel. It's called Super 304H. It's 18 chromium, 9 nickel, and I can't remember what else. It's got a few other things, silicon, niobium, a few things like that. Um, it's a specialty steel. Uh, it has you know, good properties for certain applications. But to make it even better, uh, you can add chromium on the surface by electroplating. So what they did is they added chromium. This region right here in the micrograph, that was electroplated chromium. Now, then they took this thing and they vacuum, put it in a vacuum furnace, so you got rid of air, you didn't worry about oxidation, but they heat treated it. This time it was at 900 Celsius for, I can't remember how long, um, some period of time. And then what they did is they did line scans using energy dispersive spectroscopy, EDS, which you've learned about, right? And here's what they find. The chromium, which you'd expect to be super rich on the surface, right? The chromium drops and then it plateaus and it drops and it plateaus, right? Meanwhile, the iron, 
which is what this was, you know, again, the, the steel is mostly iron, but it does have these other things. The iron is like this, it drops to there, and then it, it plummets down to there, right? So what's happening? What's happening is this. The iron that's in your material is diffusing into the coating, and the chromium is diffusing out. So what's interesting is that you see this intermediate gray region in the micrograph behind it. That region corresponds to this different region of new plateau values, and you could literally figure out what these were, right? And you could figure out what the line compound must have been that's forming there, right? You see that this one is at about maybe 50%. This looks to me about 30% and then everything else is less. So you can figure out the composition from these EDS scans. And again, this uh, distance over which this occurs, we can calculate once we understand diffusion. So that's what we're going to do in this chapter and that's why it's worth learning about.